Hi, my name is Jae Young Lim, and today we talk about how to leverage software in the loop simulations to test your daily workflows of your vehicle. We go through a brief introduction of what software in the loop simulation is and go through the components of the simulation so that you can test your own vehicle in a software in the loop simulation. A software in the loop simulation is a way to run the PX or flight stack directly on your computer compared to a flight controller with a simulator that can simulate the uh, vehicle dynamics as well as the sensor you can basically fly a, re a, a simulated vehicle that acts as a real vehicle in the software point of view the flight stack communicates with the simulator through the hardware in the loop uh, Mavlink messages which include the actuator controls and various sensors this allows you to test various actuator configurations and sensor configurations of the vehicle. Lockstep keeps the simulation and the flight stack in sync with the Mavlink Hill messages so that you don't have inconsistent results depending on the performance of the computer. In this talk we focus on gazebo based software in the loop simulation since it is the most standard and widely used simulation. At Aterian, we leverage software in the loop simulations to do end-to-end -end testing. This includes the ground station as well as the real vehicle. As you can see, we can plan a regular mission and the UI elements of the ground station is all functional and the vehicle has the same behavior as the real vehicle since we are running the flight stack directly in the simulation. Also you can see all the gimbal controls as well as the camera controls working and this is very helpful not only for um, development but also for uh, people using uh, the vehicle to get familiarized with the behaviors before going out in the field. The use of uh, software in the loop simulation can be broken down in three major areas. One is to demonstrate behaviors for developers but also operators after a major software update to get familiarized with new features as well as new behaviors before going out in the field. Also PX4 uses software in the loop simulation to do continuous integrations testing so that um, every code change or, or pull request gets verified by actually flying the vehicle in the simulation. Also for development, software development by speeding up the iteration cycles and minimizing the hours you spend in the field. Software in the loop simulation is a great tool for developers to stay efficient. The simulation can be run through a make command uh, by specifying the viewer, which is the simulation. Um, the configuration of the vehicle, which includes models as well as uh, sub-configurations of the models and the world which the vehicle will be simulated in. PX4 also supports uh, running uh, software in the loop simulations through ROS. Also, we can simulate multiple vehicles with a single script. And basically what this does is it uses an exacro macro to increment the TCP port which is used for the Mavlink Hill message communication between the flight stack and the simulator. The maximum uh, number of vehicles that can be simulated is 255 which is the maximum number Mavlink can support with the SysID field. Uh, especially gazebo 
uh, the software and the loop simulation can be broken down into three components. Uh, the model, which describes the vehicle, the plugin, which uh, defines and configures uh, the sensor information or the vehicle dynamics, and the world, which um, defines the environment the vehicle will fly in. When integrating a new vehicle into PX4, uh, the mixer uh, enables the vehicle to publish actuator controls to the relevant actuators. What is different with the real vehicle and the simulated vehicle is that the actuator controls do not go to the actual actuator, but go to the simulation module, simulator model, module, which translates this into a, a hardware in the loop actuator uh, Mavlink message. This gets sent to the Gazebo Mavlink interface plugin, which translates this into uh, the Gazebo transport messages that gets consumed with various uh, plugins within the simulation, especially for actuation, the Gazebo motor model, which simulates the force and moments generated by the motors, and the lift drag plugin which simulates the control surfaces or aerodynamic effects of the vehicle. As you can see, we can even simulate uh, a complex model such as a tilt rotor, as you can see on the right. As a brief example, here is the Mavlink interface defining the channels and um, by defining the uh, index of the actuator commands, this gets passed to uh, the uh, motor model as, um, as you are wiring the uh, motors. With the lift drag plugin, it is a little different where the Mavlink interface controls the joint position of the control surfaces and the joint position are read from the lift drag plugin. Sensors are implemented either with a model plugin or a sensor plugin in Gazebo, where a model plugin uses information of model states and a sensor plugin uses the sensor class of Gazebo. Uh, all these plugins uh, um, send their information to the Gazebo Mavlink interface, which translates them to the Mavlink Hill message that gets sent to the flight stack. Here is an example of the IMU sensor plugin where you can configure various um, noise parameters of the gyroscope and accelerometer. And uh, as a result, you can simulate complex uh, behavior such as the fixed wing uh, catapult launch, a catapult takeoff, as you can see on the right. Using plugins, you can not only simulate sensors, but also safety critical failures and flight termination states, um, such as the parachute plugin, which subscribes to um, the actuator commands and trigger a parachute when there is a flight termination state, which is the same way a normal parachute trigger will work in, the, in a real vehicle. Also, sensor failures can be triggered through uh, a parameter such as a uh, uh, ending with a block um, so that we can simulate uh, safety critical features without risking a real vehicle. Also, you would want to test your vehicle in various operating environments that the vehicle will be flying in in the real world. With the recent architectural changes, the world is now independent of the model and uh, various models can be spawned into the same world. This enables testing various models uh, with the consistent environment set. The worlds are defined in an SDF file uh, under the worlds directory and you can set properties such as the location of the world, uh, the weather of the world including wind and gust, 
and uh, the physics of the world. The physics uh, basically uh, define the time, time step of your lockstep, which defines the fidelity of the simulation. The location of the world can be defined through spherical coordinates tag, which sets the GPS location of the local origin to the GPS plugin. This is useful to align a uh, map UI on the ground control station. As you can see on the right, you can see that the 3D model uh, in the world matches the map displayed on Q ground control. Also to simulate weather, you can simulate wind since the wind is the has the largest influence over vehicles um, in the environment. Um, since wind is now a world plug-in, um, you, you can have consistent wind testing environments with different vehicle types. And with the recent changes, the wind is now defined as a wind velocity instead of directly applying force to the body. So um, now the influence to motor thrust and lift drag is modeled. This enables us to test uh, uh, wind influence features such as the weather vane, as you see on the right, which makes the VTOL point its nodes towards the wind for stability. Thank you for listening and I look forward to have interesting discussions with you during the Pixel Desk.